In this patient teaching program, today's topic is about adenoid hypertrophy. So before going into the topic, let us have a look about the upper area, the structural upper area. Have a look at this feature. This part is the nasal cavity. The part behind that forms a part of pharynx. So since this is behind nasal cavity and part of the pharynx, it is called as nasopharynx, as I have depicted in the next picture. This is nasal cavity and this is nasopharynx. So, nasopharynx has got three functions. One, it directs the air inside into the lungs. Second function, it directs air through a small opening to the ear. For normal function of the ear, of the ear, air presence of air is a must. The tube which connects the nasopharynx to the ear is called eustachian tube. The third function of nasopharynx, we will go to that. There is a tissue in the nasopharynx which guards us or protects us against infection. This is called as adenoid tissue. So, the, the function of that is like a policeman or guard to the body. At this stage, if you ask me what is adenoid hypertrophy, it is nothing but the adenoid become bigger in size and obstructs the nasopharynx resulting in the complaints, symptoms. So why does it become enlarged? What is the etiology for it? So let us go through the etiology. It can be physiological or it can be pathological. Adenoid hypertrophy is a disease of children. It's commonly seen in children. Physiological reason at the age of 3 and 7 years of age where the children are more exposed to the outer world especially going out or even the preschool, that is the age between 3 and 7. The immunological activity increases, so the adenoid becomes bigger in size. Second is pathological. We have three common reasons for that. One is recurrent upper respiratory tract infection. Second is severe allergy. Third is recurrent rhinosinusitis. Now let us see the complaints. As I have already mentioned before, the patient is a child. So the complaint most commonly comes from the mother or from the parents, you can see. For ease of understanding, we can divide it into four categories. Complaints related to the nose, related to the ear, throat and general complaint. So let us see the complaint related to the nose first. Here, the mother says, when he, whenever the child speaks, it looks, it sounds as if his nose is blocked, like Milkman, milkman, nose is blocked, hyponasal speech. And during sleep, he is no cell lot, he breathes with the more open mouth, and he has got disturbed sleep. He keeps on moving from one end of the bed to the other end. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't have a normal sleep. And at times, he gets up from the sleep because he doesn't get oxygen air properly, that which we call as apnea. These are the complaints related to the nose. Now, related to the ear. Because of the blockage of eustachian tube, it can result in recurrent attacks of ear pain or collection of fluid in the ear or even infection of the middle ear. Coming to the throat complaints, the common complaint will be recurrent episodes of sore throat. Coming to the general development, there will be poor general development and the child will be restless, lack of concentration, poor schooling and loss of appetite. The restlessness and lack of concentration is because he doesn't get a normal uninterrupted sleep and oxygen supply to the brain is also decreased at that time because of the same reason. Now, I am going to show the next signs, what are things you look for in the case of adenoid. In this patient, where the adenoid hypertrophy is almost complete, like it is obstructing about 75 to 100 percentage, and she was not subjected to treatment or any surgery. So because of this, they, there was even facial changes, like how you see in this picture. So this child has got a long dull look and long face. The parents, both of them, they have a round face. She has got a long face. Open mouth, because she is not breathing through the nose. Pinched nostril, retracted upper lip and loss of nasolabial food. 
lesolipid 4 becomes prominent when you smile. When the look itself is, is dull and child is restless and low, no concent, lack of concentration, along with that you have loss of nasolabial fold 2. The same child, when you have a look of the oral cavity, you can see the teeth are protruding, especially the upper incisors and the palate is high arched. These are the findings in the oral cavity. Now, let us see what are the findings or secondary effects in the ear. So first let me show you the picture of a normal ear. This is how it looks like. Next I will show you the secondary effect. Here you can find fluid correction, the fluid level and presence of air bubble. These are the secondary effects. So I have shown you what are the changes in the face and in the oral cavity as well as changes in the ear. But we have not seen that in our study. How are you going to see that? Like how I mentioned before, adenoids is behind the nasal cavity. So if you have to visualize that, you need a camera or an endoscope to look at it or you can take an X. So let us do an endoscopy for the child. So in flexible endoscopy, we can come to know the presence or absence of adenoid and if it is present, it is obstructing the nasopharynx at what percentage? Is it 25, 50, 75 or complete obstruction of the nasopharynx? So these two are pictures. Let me show you a photograph. In this child, you can see complete 90 to 100 percent obstruction of the nasopharynx. This is about the flexible endoscopy. Next, what are the investigations we are going to do? There will be X-ray adenoids and sinus, and we need to do two hearing tests to rule out the secondary effect of the adenoids. In the X-ray, if you see here, X-ray the post nasal space I have shown two photographs. The first one is a photograph of where it's longer. There is no adenoids here, smooth, and the air column. If you see, it is of the equal caliber. In the second photograph, X-ray, you can see there is a bulge which is the adenoid, and the air column is very thin, means it has been compromised. Next, X-ray of the sinus. Then comes our hearing test and we do, as I have mentioned, we do two types of hearing test. The one on the this side shows what is the degree of hearing loss and one on this side shows whether it is a normal pressure in the middle ear or negative pressure in the middle ear. I have shown a normal one and the normal hearing test. So depending on this finding along with adenoidectomy, we have to combine ear surgery too. So now, Coming to the treatment, for ease of understanding, let us divide into two types, mild case and moderate to severe case. In a case of mild case, symptoms are very mild, you have need to treat the infection and nasal, to be continued with nasal spray for a month or so. That will take care of the mild cases. But in case of moderate to severe, where there is more than 75 percentage of obstruction of the nasopharynx and so many complaints related to that the only treatment for that the adenoid need to be removed that is surgery adenoidectomy has to be done so next we will see what are the indications of for adenoidectomy so the indication for adenoidectomy are adenoid is enlarged obstructing along with that the child has got disturbed sleep and he has got apneic episodes he is getting up from sleep because he is not getting proper air oxygen second indication will be the adenoids they form a foci of infection and transmit to sinus or to the ear with secondary effect in the sinus or in the ear third speech abnormality and the last the child has got dental occlusion abnormality like malalignment and we need to rearrange it to give treatment by wiring but before doing that, the endodontist will refer to a ED specialist to see and rule out the presence of adenoid. If it is obstructing, we need to do an adenoid. These are the indications for adenoid. Now, now coming to the contraindications. We don't do surgery in a case of left palate or if there is a no injury. There is a palatal injury. And we prefer not to do before the age of 3. The last one is if the child has got any bleeding or clotting disorder. Normally, if there is a wound and if it starts bleeding, it stops within 5 to 7 minutes. 
if it doesn't stop by 5 to 7 minutes it takes 10 minutes or 15 or much more than that that means child has got some bleeding or clotting disorder in these children if you take a detailed history along with the parents you will come to know that the parents or their related near close relatives they will be having the bleeding or clotting disorder in these cases we need to refer them to the hematologist they will do a detailed blood examination come to a diagnosis and if operation to be done we have to follow their protocol what are the pre-operative we need to do some simple blood test to be done along with that even x-ray test which the anesthetist or pediatrician is going to ask now once we have decided that surgery has to be done we need a concern from you from the parents once they give a concern and it is ready the blood test report will be ready within an hour or so with this blood, blood test report and x-ray we have to take the time to a pediatrician pediatrician will have a look and give fitness for surgery with this fitness surgery from the pediatrician we need to take him to the anesthetist anesthetist will have a look and will decide whether the child is fit for anesthesia or not so the pre workup before surgery is done that is what we have depicted here now comes about surgery the surgery can be either a daycare or it can be admission for a day or two what does that mean? daycare means with all these reports ready we ask the parents and the child to come on the day of surgery in the morning say 5 or 6 o'clock he gets admitted then operation is done in the morning and by evening 5 or 6 he has been discharged he goes back home that is daycare surgery now for admission day or two it means suppose the surgery is on Tuesday the child gets admitted on Monday he stays in the hospital that day Tuesday is operation day and Wednesday morning he is discharged that is the admission for day or two now coming to workup which we have already discussed about pre-operative advice suppose the child is getting admitted a day before that day night dinner he has to take it from home or from the hospital please try to avoid junk foods and he has to take a lot of water the previous day and that particular day and let him go to bed early he needs a good 8 hours of sleep one point of importance is from midnight 12 o'clock till after surgery till the doctor or the staff nurse comes and tells you to give something till then please do not give anything to the child to drink or to eat nil per hour so ne next day is a day of surgery so the surgery is adenoidectomy next day morning the staff nurse comes in she changes the dress to the OT dress to the child child is taken to the OT and of course before going to the OT the doctor must have discussed with you and he will discuss with you what technique to be used which you can choose and tell him and the duration for surgery it takes usually it takes less than an hour or so so once the surgery is over the child comes back to the recovery room in the recovery room the child is going to be there for 15 to 30 minutes when everything is fine he goes back to the ward or to the room to you so when you receive the child in the ward or room the child will be very irritable continuously crying he needs your support and along with that the child may vomit and when you feel the child you may feel he has got a slight temperature he may complain of ear pain we have not done any ear surgery but he may complain of ear pain and there will be change of voice also do not worry in the following situation all this will be taken care of all these are minor complaints will be taken care of for next 4 hours try to make him sleep I know it is difficult he is irritable he will not he will be crying of pain he will be moving around a lot try to make him sleep next 4 hours the sisters will walk in on and off say every one hour or so to check his vitals temperature and if there is there any signs of bleeding or not after four hours they say okay now you can give him something to drink to start with you give him clear cold water to first he tolerates that well means he doesn't warm it means you can give him ice cream so once that is done the staff nurse walks in they give him give him syrup antibiotic and analgesic painkiller and nasal drops too now let us see what is the diet for the day it can be ice cold water you can give vanilla ice cream 
jelly, pudding, and yogurt. What are the diet to be avoided? Let us go through that. Hot spicy food, soft drinks, and no physical exertion. So that particular day, it's just liquid diet at all. Next day onwards, liquid diet, everything cold, and you can add up soft diet. So this goes on for a week or so. He becomes normal by 10 days to within 14 days. No phys physical exertions. The child will be playing inside the home and please do not allow him to go outside to play in the hot sun and get excited. I'll tell you the reason for that. Because if you go through the complications of surgery, there are many. One of the complications is hemorrhage, which can be in the theatre, which will be well managed by the doctor of course, or it can be at home. In case if there is any bleeding at home, please do not wait and wait that it is going to stop by itself. You have to take him to the hospital. The doctor examines the child and he may tell you to please admit the child and if necessary you have to take the child to the operation theatre to, to control the bleed. Those children with exertion and those who take hard food, not the soft one, those who don't follow all this, they may, the chances of bleeding increases. The other complications are, there are small damage to neighboring structures and the last two complications are, just behind the adenoid, you have muscle and bone which may get damaged and for that you need a day of admission for a day or two. That also can be taken care of. So the review is going to be after discharge, the doctor is going to see you again after 10 days and before 2 weeks, within 14 days. So here in this video, I have told you what is adenoid, what is the function of adenoid, what are the complaints, what are we looking for, what are the secondary effects and investigation, what you expect from us in the hospital and what we expect from you in the hospital or especially concentrating on the post-operative care, a lot of support from the parents. This is what we have discussed in this patient teaching video. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please do subscribe and don't forget to click on the like sign. Thank you so much.